Coming up in this episode, we have scores and reports from Saturday and Friday's Rugby League games in the Super League and the NRL. Plus, it's confirmed, Michaelis going back to the NRL. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel El Dominance, Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. Also, please remember that I'm still running my Buy Me A Coffee campaign to help generate funds for a future Rugby League project. Anything you can give, that'd be fantastic. But anyway, let's get on with the show. Well, we're going to have a quick look into the scores and score lines, and also the scorers from the NRL and the Super League. To begin with, we're going to look at the Super League. Friday and Saturday saw four games, with OK Avising Leeds Rhinos, St. Helens versus Wakefield Trinity on Friday, and Saturday seeing Warrington Wolves face Hull FC, and Catalan's Dragons face the... First of all, we have Hull KR versus Leeds Rhinos, and on Friday night, it was KR who came out victorious, 20 points to 12, in what was unbelievably terrible conditions. Lewis Senior, Jesse Sue, and Kane Lynette were the try scorers for Hull KR, either side of the half. Lachlan Coop kicked over two conversions and two penalties for the 20 points. Leeds rallied in the second half through tries from Roberts and McDonnell when with uh, Rhys Martin kicking both conversions. David Vesatua had to be taken off in the first half with an ankle injury, but the Robins still held out to win despite the late pressure from Leeds. Next, we have Wakefield being nilled for the third time this season, as St. Helens running 38 points to no response. Percival Hapoate, Makinson, Dodd, Burrow with two, and Johnny Lomax got the tries for St. Helens, while conversions four off from Percival and a penalty gave Saints the outright lead. And Saturday came around with Warrington Wolves beating Hull FC 34 points to 6, with the Black and Whites now 5 defeats from their 7 games, while Warrington stopped the table with 7 wins from 7. Ashton, Metautia, Curry, Dufty, Drinkwater and Nicholson were the try scorers, and Stefan Ratchford kicked 5 from his all attempts. Brad Dwyer got over in the second half, but it was only a consolation, as Jake Clifford converted the try. And to finish off Saturday, the Tigers gave Catalan's Dragons an almighty scare to come out just losers in this game, 22 points to 18. Catalan's Dragons and Castleford Tigers traded tries early, with Paul Seguer and Jack Robert scoring a try apiece. Tom Johnson and Atom Morg scored a try either side at half time, with a penalty from Adam Kieran putting the home side up what we thought was an unsurmountable lead of 16 points to 4. Oh, sorry, 16 points to 6 as Paul McShane converted the Browbent try. Castleford though scored two quick tries, 14 minutes apart, as Jordan Turner and Broadbent got his second to put Castleford 18 points to 16 up thanks to conversions from Paul McShane. Unfortunately for Castleford, a former player came back to haunt him as Mike McMeekin scored on the 76th minute with Arthur Moggs slotting over the extras to give the Perpignan side a victory. The news broke just before the Warrington game against um, Hull FC that Mc Thomas McKayley will indeed be leaving the club for Passage New in as of Monday, to be honest. After only being at the club for less than, I don't know, eight months, the big forward has, has decided to go back to the NRL after a fantastic start to the 2023 season. A 
According to this statement, Warrington Wolves have confirmed that McKaylee has been granted permission to return to Australia on compassionate grounds. The club have agreed a transfer fee for the 25-year-old forward, and he will be joining the NRL side, the Gold Coast Titans. McKaylee will make his may, has made his final appearance against Hull FC before he returns home, and now Warrington are actively looking towards bringing in a replacement. The front rower has made 18 appearances in total for Warrington Wolves, scoring four tries in the Primrose and Blue. He announced that via his social media first of all, and then made an official statement through the Warrington Wolves website. I want to thank everyone who has been involved in my time at Warrington, from coaches, staff and board, to players who I now consider lifelong friends. Sad and disappointed my time here has come to an end, but excited for the boys to achieve something great for the club. Last but definitely not the least, I thank you Wire fans for your continuous support and understanding for my family. This was more or less echoed in the official statement via Warrington Wolves website. I had a wonderful time since coming to get over here, the boys, the club and the fans have all been great with me and my family. I'm sorry it didn't work out as originally planned, but my family comes first for me. And I'm sure that's something that people can understand. Despite the disappointment that McKaylee is going back to Australia, Warrington's Chief Executive Carl Fitzpatrick was understanding in his statement, saying, Although we are disappointed to lose Thomas, we fully understand the respect that he, Jasmine and the children need to return home and receive support from the wider family. Everyone at the club wishes Thomas and his family well for their future. Gold Coast Titans have come out since and confirmed that McKaylee is signed for the remainder of 2023 and the 25 year old prop is returning home to the coast. The Auckland Bar forward played for school, uh, played his schoolboy footy at Kebra Park State High School and was part of the GIO Schoolboy Cup final in a, a team that also had Danny Boyd, David Fafita, and Moeki Fuatuaka. Titans head coach Justin Holbrook t is excited to take the former West Tigers forward and bring him to the club. We're thrilled that Thomas has agreed to join us and that he will return to a gameplay footy on the coast, Holbrook said. If you've seen any of the Super League season, you know that he's, in, he's one of the form forwards in the competition and he has been playing some great football with Warrington. Having a player of Thomas's skill and experience to bolster our middle forward stock is a great result for the club and we know that he will have a big impact for us this season. This is definitely a blow for Warrington Wolves who had a big pack mentality going into the season and it's worked really well for them. So to lose one of their, those players is going to be quite devastating for the club. Saying that though, they have already been looking actively to sign a player and a player that is ruled out at this point is uh, Donamis Louis, who has been playing in the Hot Plus um, Cup for the Redcliffe Dolphins. The former camera player is said not to be one of the players that Warrington are looking at, but have they have many a plans uh, afoot. Just that Louis is not one of them. Now to this morning's games in the NRL as there were three games played for our entertainment and there were some absolute fantastic efforts between all the sides involved. NRL round five continued with three intriguing clashes with Manly Seagulls facing Newcastle Knights at Glen Willow Oval. The Wind Stadium sees St. George Illawarra Dragons face the Dolphins who are looking to bounce back from their last loss and Brisbane Broncos want to continue their 100% record against and find a win against the West Tigers. And what an epic we've had 
opening up Saturday with Glen Willow Oval in Mudgee. Seeing a 32 all draw between the Manly Seagulls and the Newcastle Knights. Six tries each, four out of six conversions each. And then drop goals are plenty, all missing. Golden Point Extra Time couldn't separate these two sides. The Seagulls open up the scoring with Hol Holmoli uh, Olakuatu going over on the third minute before Christian Tupolotu uh, Christian Tupolotu goes over on the eighth minute. There was a sim binning for Olakuatu on the eleventh minute, which sees Greg Meiju go over on the twelfth minute. Jack Johns followed that up with five minutes left, uh, five minutes later, with Brad Parker giving the Seagulls a the lead once again due to their numbers uh, returning to full thirteen. A quick couple of tries for Dominic Young in nine minutes in the first half, twenty third and the thirty two, helps a lead of 22 points to 16 at half time. Lachlan Fitzgibbon was sent to the Simbin for the Knights on the 20th minute. Dom Young got his hat-trick on the 55th minute after he went over in the corner. Kelmo Tuolagi scored on the 53rd minute to give some parity back to the Sea Eagles. And once again it was the Sea Eagles that scored after this with KO Weeks and Ruben Garrick before Dom Young completed his fourther as he went over yet again. A drop goal apiece in normal time didn't finish the game, but the Knights tried a one-pointer and a two-pointer drop goal in golden point extra time and the Seagulls trying to drop goal, but neither side could be separated. 32 all, Ruben Garrick kicked four from four, Jackson Hastings kicked two from three, as did Lachlan Miller for the Knights. Couldn't separate these two sides, and what a game to start off the day. Our second game sees St. George Illawarra Dragons find some form and beat the inform NRL Dragons. 38 points to 12. Despite his, uh, Jermaine Izako scoring on the 14th minute of a try and converting that try to give the Dolphins the lead, Little, Laurie, Lomax, Hunt, Ravalawa twice all got on the scoreboard before the Dolphins could respond once again. Amiso Tabawai for Dow scored in the 72nd minute, but Tyrell Sloan closed off the game with a, fant with a fantastic win for the St. George Illawarra Dragons. Lomax converted five of his conversion attempts. Wow, there was a penalty just before half time to give the Dolphins some hope going into the second half. But to end it all, the Dragons come out with a victory. 38 points to 12. And Saturday closed with the Brisbane Broncos beating West Tigers 46 points to 12. Jordan Ricky opened the scoring on the ninth minute in a 28 point blast with further tries from Kurt Capewell, Payne Haas, Selwyn Cobble and Jordan Ricky by the 33rd minute with Adam Reynolds kicking in total. Four from his five attempts in that first half. 28 points to nil with no way back. The West Tigers were the ones that opened the scoring with Isaiah Papali'i getting on the try scoring list. Jake Simpkins got another one after Herbie Farmworth and Katoni Staggs both scored for the Broncos to extend their lead. Adam Dewey kicked both goals. If what Katoni Staggs completed the scoring with a try and Adam Reynolds' conversion. Reynolds finished from, with seven from eight conversions, but it was going to be another Broncos day as they continue at the top of the table. And that's it for another episode ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching please remember to like subscribe and share this video worldwide as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming your way in the near future 
Thank you all for commenting on the videos recently. I hope that continues as we look to continue the Discord that is Rugby League. In the meantime, tell me what your thoughts are on today's results. There were a few, and also last night's results. And tell me who was the best performance. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. I'll end the episode as I always do by wishing you all the very best. So please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.